there and welcome to MC Kids, where our sole purpose is bringing the Word of God to kids like you. I'm Dr. Cookie and I'm so glad you clicked on this video. Today we're learning about being obsessed with God. You might be thinking, why should I be obsessed with God? Well, that's easy. God's absolutely amazing, and you can't do a single thing without him. All of our blessings flow right from above, and they come from God. If you think about anything that's really cool, things that made your jaw drop or made you mind blown, God made each and every one of those. Lions, tigers, volcanoes, mountains the rain, snow, and even the coolest kid in the world, you. God made it all, and his love has no boundaries. Take your arms and just stretch them out as wide as you can. God's love is even bigger. He heals us. He makes a way out of no way. When you feel stuck, he fixes it for you. He wakes you up in the morning. He heals your body. He has so much love to give. And any God that is that mighty, that powerful, and that loving deserves our worship. That kind of God deserves our praise, deserves our love and devotion. Just face it, God deserves our obsession. Our memory verse for the day is 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 11. Look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. But how do I start working on getting to know God in order to obsess over him? You seek him out. What does seek mean? The dictionary tells us that the word seek means to attempt to find something or to attempt or desire to obtain or achieve something. I think the second definition is closer to what the Bible means because we're trying to get to God. When we seek God, we work on deepening our relationship with him. We become detectives in our search for God as we seek him because we are looking through the Bible, spending lots of time praying and following his commands so that we can find him, get to know him, and have him in our hearts and minds at all times. Uh-oh. Sounds like seeking God takes time. Well, doesn't it take time to get to know your best friend? I mean, especially if you wanna know everything about them, but was that worth it? I bet it was. The Bible tells us that spending our time getting to know God is worth it too. I mean, it says that all things work for good for those who love the Lord. And how can you love someone if you don't know them? And how can you know them if you don't spend time with them? And how can you spend time with them if you don't know where they are, you have to seek them out. There's an awesome example of this in the Bible. And can you guess who it is? I mean, after all, there's no better example than Jesus Christ himself. Anyone heard the story of when Jesus healed the man with leprosy? I bet some of you have. It's a pretty cool story, but after all, all the stories about Jesus are pretty cool. Well, some of you might be thinking, well, what's leprosy? What's a leper? So a leper is someone who has leprosy, and leprosy is a disease that affects the skin. And what leprosy does is it gives you light or red patches on your skin, and it can even make your hair fall out. And if that's not bad enough to make matters worse, back in those olden days when Jesus was around, people with leprosy were spiritually unclean. And when you're spiritually unclean, you can't go before God. Can you imagine not being able to go before God when we need him so desperately? Those people couldn't do that. And so as a result, they were sent away. And the reason that they sent them away was that if someone else touched that leper or if they sat where that leper sat, then they were spiritually unclean too. And then they could not go before God. So those people were sent out to live really sad lives alone. Keep that in mind. It's important to the story. Here it goes. 
Once, when he was in one of the cities, there was a man covered with leprosy. When he saw Jesus, he bowed with his face to the ground and begged him, Lord, if you choose, you can make me clean. Then Jesus stretched out his hand, touched him, and said, I do choose. Be made clean. Immediately the leprosy left him, and he ordered him to tell no one. Go, he said, and show yourself to the priest, and, as Moses commanded, make an offering for your cleansing, for testimony to them. But now more than ever, the word about Jesus spread abroad. Many crowds would gather to hear him and to be cured of their diseases, but he would withdraw to deserted places and pray. Jesus was always seeking alone time with God and included him in everything he did. God was who Jesus was closest to. He depended on God as his power source. He didn't do a single thing without our Lord. Just like your phone or tablet doesn't work if you can't find the charger, that's how Jesus was about God. Seeking God's face is focusing your mind's attention on him and your heart's love on him. Imagine being lost in a really big grocery store and you have no idea where your parent is. You'd be obsessed with finding them. That longing to find your mom or dad is how it feels when you really seek God. You've just got to be close to him. Jesus shows us how important that relationship is. If Jesus is blameless, never did a single bad thing, performed miracles, conquered death, and is the son of God and still snuck off to spend time with God, we definitely should be seeking God's face daily. We should be obsessed with him and be obsessed with getting to know God better. When Jesus spent time with God, Notice that he did it alone. He didn't count on anyone else to talk to God for him. Jesus went to God in prayer regularly and spent quality time with God. He spent all night with God and included him in his everyday activities by talking to him. Talking to God is prayer. Listening to God is prayer. Jesus did both of these things. Our relationship with God is individual, and that means that each one of us has to make sure we have a good relationship with God. Just because your mom or dad or grandma prays often and reads the Bible, that's just not enough for you. You have to know God for yourself. I am a friend of God. He calls me God is so awesome. He wants to know you. And he wants you to know him. He wants you to know him even better than you know your best friend, even better than you know your mom or dad. He wants you to love him more than anything else in this world. And in order to do that, you have to seek his face. You have to want to be close to him. And you can do this by studying the Bible, praying and spending alone time with God. Be obsessed with it. What better time to start than today? Let's go back to our beginning verse. It was 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 11. Do you remember it? All right, it says, look to the Lord in his strength, seek his face always. The Bible tells us that if we seek God, we will find him and that he loves those who love him. The world needs God so badly right now. All of us need God desperately. We need his love. We need his presence because we are all nothing without him. He is our power source. In order to get to God, you must go through Jesus first. And that means you have to accept that Jesus is God and that he did the impossible. Jesus died on the cross for all the bad things we would ever do. He rose from the dead after three days and now sits in heaven with his dad who is God. By believing those things deep in your heart and believing those things for real, not for fake, you have done the first step in being saved. That means when your earthly body dies, your soul lives on forever and ever with God in heaven because God loves you. That's the best gift we could ever receive because it keeps us close to God and we never want to be away from him. In fact, we want to be obsessed with him. Do any of you want Jesus to be the boss of your life? That means you want him to be in control of your life because he has the very best plan for you. If you do and you'd like to accept him in your heart, all you have to do is believe those things and say right now, Jesus is Lord. Say it with me on the count of three. One, two, three. 
Jesus is Lord. All right, maybe some of you missed it. We'll try again. Ready? We're going to say Jesus is Lord on the count of three. One, two, three. Jesus is Lord. Okay, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your love and for your blessings, Lord. Thank you for always being by our side and for accepting us just as we are, no matter what. We ask that you continue to work on our hearts so that we can learn to love you more deeply and to improve and strengthen our relationships with you, Lord. I pray that every single child that watches this video deepens their love for you through it and that they continue to read their Bible, pray, and love you with all their heart and soul, Lord. May you be in the forefront of their minds and also deep in their hearts. May you be their foundation, oh God. We ask that you watch over every single family that watches this video. We ask that you bring the children to you, God, and you help us to do your work. We love you and we just thank you that you are God. We thank you for the gift of Jesus, Lord. We thank you for another day and we ask that you just continue to stay by our side and we thank you for your perfect plan. In your son's name we pray, amen. All right, guys, have a good week and we'll see you next time for another MC Kids video. Peace. Oh!